I'd really like to play the theme music for you to get the rest of the series rolling, but it goes on for a minute and a half. YouTube frowns bigly on clips that long, at least when I do it. Also, fair warning, if you're familiar with the show, you know this is a two-part story. The thing is, the version of the show that I found crammed it all together into one file, and I don't know where the split point is. I did my best, but if it's wrong, just go with it. Must be a cop. Miss? Stay away from me. I'll jump right now, I swear. Because if you do that, you never get a chance to see your boyfriend again. Uh, I don't want to see him. It's all his fault. Miss, please, take it easy, will you? By 1977, we were starting to understand that police can't do it all. Captain Barbera isn't a trained counselor. He doesn't know what to say to this young lady. That's not his fault, but it's somebody's fault that there's nobody on the entire police force who is qualified to handle this sort of thing. The whole defund the police movement is about this, not about ordinary police work. The goal is to shift funds around and put more into crisis mental health management rather than shoot them up bang bang. It's a good thing. Having said that, I'll grant that defund the police is a really stupid way to say it. Also, this distraught lady doesn't realize she's being stalked. <laughs> Unlike the comic book Spider-Man, our hero wears the web shooters on the outside of his gloves, and you may have noticed he's wearing a Batman-style utility belt with extra cartridges. If Peter can ever get a couple of dollars in his pocket, he'll want to buy a small camera and mount it to that same belt. Comic book Spider-Man figured that out real quick. Before he got into a fight, he'd web the camera up somewhere and set it to automatic, go deal with the bad people, and then sell the pictures to Jonah. Will he eventually figure out how to do that in this series? Wouldn't we like to know? Yeah, I haven't looked ahead yet either. Miss, Miss, please come back inside and let's talk, okay? No. <laughs> I, I'm all through talking. I understand that, lady. In 1993, I reached that point myself, except I was living in a little town in Wyoming that didn't have any tall buildings. But there was a big reservoir near the town, and there was a nice tall cliff above it at a certain point. There was no guardrail, and I could see my car and me flying off it. I would finally conquer my fear of heights, and ultimately, I would just disappear. My family would have to deal with that, but not with the stigma of me having removed myself from the planet. It'd be a big mystery. My wife was working for a PA in a doctor's office at the time, and he frankly saved my life. It wasn't as dramatic as this rescue, but it was equally effective. Here you are, Captain. Special delivery. Hey, wait a minute. When I was collecting Marvel Comics, there was a time when Hank Pym disappeared. A new guy calling himself Yellow Jacket came on the scene and started taking down crooks. The first time he did, the police told him he'd need to testify. He said, as nearly as I can quote, Sorry, I only play cops and robbers. Someone else can play judge and jury. Spider-Man is taking the same approach. Do what's necessary, then split. Too many questions are bad for his effectiveness. At the Daily Bugle, Peter is chatting with Jonah's secretary, Rita. Mr. Jameson's office. Uh-huh. You want him to donate to what? Honey, you got the wrong Mr. Jameson. You're welcome. <laughs> the Atlantic Socialist Alliance wants Mr. Jameson to make a donation. <laughs> Mr. Jameson? Yes, and he's so conservative, he wouldn't even eat a piece of steak if it's a little bit pink. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. I love that joke, even though some people won't get it. 
The word pinko started appearing in the 1920s as a slur against communists, or more specifically, sympathizers who weren't full-on commies but embraced socialism. Since communists were the reds, the not-quite-communists were pink. It's light red. I grew up hearing that word thrown around by local politicians, and I laughed every time. Let's face it, pinko, pinko. Pinkle, it sounds ridiculous. Nobody called communists reddos, so it's kind of from left field anyway. Rita, did I hear you say that you've been here almost a year? Mm -hmm. I can't believe it's been that long. Seems longer to you too, huh? <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, it's really nice having you here. I mean, it's nice having somebody else on my side, if you know what I mean. Well, thanks, Pete, but it works both ways. I mean, everybody needs somebody to talk to. Which reminds me, I saw your pal Spider-Man on the news last night. Peter says, yeah, so did I. Unfortunately, I missed that event and didn't get any pictures. So far, I like Chip Fields as Rita. She brings a certain brightness to the desk that I never saw in the Betty Brant of the comics. Rita will only take so much from Jonah before she starts to give it right back, and she just might flash that big smile while she does it. Ms. Fields started out as a singer, and in 1973, she joined the Ronettes and recorded a couple of singles with them. She moved into acting and got notice for a story arc she did on Good Times. But she's done almost as much directing as she has acting. She's been involved in just about every aspect of the business, and she's still at it. Rita, would you get me the files on last year's garbage strike, please? Hello, Parker. Hi, Mr. Jameson. I suppose you're here to sell me some exclusive photos on Spider-Man in action. Well, no, I, I, I saw that on television, too. I'm sorry about that, sir. Come on, boss. You can't expect Pete to get every photo of Spider-Man. Oh, I can't, kid. Why else do you suppose I've got him on the payroll? No, that's not fair. Pete does a good job every time you send him out. Which isn't nearly as often as I'd like, sir. See what I mean? I like Robert F. Simon as Jonah a lot better than David White in the pilot. David White was just too soft. You can tell he's a nice guy trying to play a bombastic twit. He didn't pull it off. Mr. Simon is pulling it off. You know, Rita, you really shouldn't talk to him like that. He could have you fired. He wouldn't dare. Oh, yes, he would. And he will, too, if you make him mad enough. And he has some very important friends that could make it very difficult for you to get another job. Oh, yeah? Well, I got some friends, too, that could make it very difficult for him to keep the tires on his rolls, if you know what I mean. Rita, you are terrific. He should ask her to marry him. By 1977, the only people who might have had a problem with it had one tooth and wore bib overalls commando style. Spider-Man's appearance has made national news, and someone in Miami has noticed. Okay, Sid, what is so important for you to drag me off a tennis court? I want to show you something I got from a TV station in New York. Couldn't this have waited? This is a piece of history you're seeing. Spider-Man has been seen on the rooftops of the city for a long time now, but this is his debut on the 6 o'clock news. The young woman had been on the ledge for over an hour. According to New York Police Department spokesman Captain Barbera, she resisted all attempts to talk her out of it. In the captain's own words, we needed a miracle, I guess you could say we got one. Sid wants Gail to go to New York and interview Spider-Man. She essentially says, what are you smoking and why aren't you sharing? Oh, oh, Sid, why me? Because he's a man and you have a way of getting men to do what you want. Gee, I wonder how she does it. Oh, yeah? Hmm. Then why can't I persuade you to put somebody else on this story? Because I know you too well. You're on mm -hmm. the 7.30 into Kennedy. Obviously, he knows how she does it. He tells her, look up Peter Parker. He's the only one who's been able to get close to Spider-Man. He's a lonely college student, and she's ISIS. This shouldn't be difficult. Right now, the lonely college student is reaming one of his professors. You actually plan to operate the reactor here at the university? Yes, I have all the clearances. Well, sir, it's one thing to conduct an experiment, to, to build a model, but to actually operate it... That means you'd have plutonium in this very building. Mr. Parker, we're talking about something a little under five kilos. Now, that's hardly a significant amount. Furthermore, it's already been delivered. Dr. Bader, I hope you have created the perfect breeder reactor. I mean, I'd love to believe that there'll be no danger, but 
just can't. The professor thinks he's come up with a better type of reactor, one that doesn't produce any nuclear waste. Somehow he's gotten permission to build it right here in the middle of a densely populated area using plutonium of all things. All the students are opposed to this, but he doesn't care. That guy who was just talking, Randy, is sort of the leader of a group of three. Safe room? There's no such thing. If you inhale plutonium oxide, you could be dead in a matter of hours. They don't call that stuff the deadly dust for nothing. Look, terrorists could come in here and steal that stuff and build a bomb. It's ridiculous. The security's been doubled on the lab. Oh, <laughs> some security. A bunch of old rent-a-cops. Carla is the second of the three. The curly-haired guy is Todd. He's the somewhat quiet member. Professor Baylor is brushing them off. All right, suppose they did steal it. They'd have to be very sophisticated terrorists to turn it into a bomb. I am sorry, sir, but you are wrong. All the information you need is available at any good library. Everybody knows that. A university senior in physics could build one if he had the plutonium. Maybe he thinks he could build one. But would it explode? I certainly hope we never have to find out. Proverbs 1618, Professor. Pride goes before destruction. If there was just some way we could convince Dr. Baylor. Maybe what he needs is a push. What do you mean? I don't know. Um, maybe he could get the bugle to write a story. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, maybe the publicity would put some real pressure on him. Yeah, tell Jonah there's a risk that some dirty commie could steal the plutonium and make a bomb. He'll put it on the front page. Well, you know, it's worth a try. I'll see you guys later, okay? Okay, Peter, take it easy. Right, what are you trying to do, tell him the whole thing? No, I just thought the way he was talking during the seminar that maybe he'd come in with us. <laughs> Peter, he's too straight. Spoiler, they're going to steal the plutonium. You know, it uh, would be good to have him with us. We don't need him. I can do everything he can. I rather doubt that. But Randy does know how to handle plutonium and how to build a bomb. But Mr. Jameson, the public has a right to know. Can you imagine what would happen if somebody stole that plutonium and used it to build a bomb? <laughs> you should be working for a science fiction magazine. I could build one. Uh, yes, what is it? A uh, Miss Hoffman is out here. Oh, well, ask her to come in. Somebody here wants to meet you. Remember, this was before the internet. You had to physically go to the library and look stuff up, yet both Peter and Randy know how to build a nuclear bomb. That's how readily available the information was. Now move that to today, the age of instant information, as I like to call it. It's a little scary. <laughs> Mr. Jameson, Mr. Parker, how nice to meet you. I have been looking forward to this. Well, it's very nice to meet you, too, Miss... Ms. Hoffman. Gail. Peter reminds me of a joke I heard a long time ago. A circus needed a new animal trainer, and there were three applicants, two guys and a voluptuous woman. The first guy went into the cage, and the tigers made him run out screaming. The woman was next. She went in, stood still, and the tigers ran at her. Suddenly they stopped, laid down, and started licking her feet. The ringmaster looked at the other guy and said, Do you think you can match that? The guy said, I don't know, but if you get those cats out of there, I'll try. Miss Hoffman is a reporter for the Weekly Examiner. It's a national paper. Supermarket tabloid. After having reviewed the entire ISIS series, and again, thank you to the gentleman who loaned me their DVDs, the idea of Joanna Cameron as a sleazy tabloid reporter requires a little mental adjustment, but she's convincing. As you probably know, we lost her in late 2021. I did a small tribute to her if you're interested. Oh, yes. I've heard it. Uh, why don't you sit down? She has an idea for a story. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's something that I've been seriously thinking about for some time now. Uh, well, you tell him. I, we, want to do an interview with Spider-Man. He should sit on the corner of Jonah's desk and say, okay, what do you want to know? If that doesn't get him a date with this chick, nothing will. Well, now, wait, I, I never know when I'm going to see Spider-Man. Well, that's all right. I'll just sort of tag along, and that way I'll be there when you do see him next time. 
if you don't mind. Well, of course he doesn't mind. <laughs> you don't mind. It won't be that bad, Peter. Uh, it could be, but at least the scenery is nice. Next stop, the college cafeteria. That's his spider sense now. He excuses himself, changes, and heads to the lab to try and stop them. They're using some mechanical arms to transfer the powdered plutonium to their own container. I assume it's also a vacuum chamber, since the oxides that plutonium forms tend to burst into flame spontaneously under certain conditions. Spidey is too late to stop them, but he has a bigger problem. Hey, what are you doing there? Come back here. Come back or I'll shoot. Hey, he went into Dr. Bader's lab. Now everybody thinks he stole it. Give me some plutonium. Yes, Parker. It's gone. The lab is clean. Does that mean we're going to be okay? For the moment, yes. The whole city could be in danger. Take it easy, will you? Oh, let me get something straight here. Now, you guys, you guys uh, saw the break in and you called us, right? Yeah, he came in through the window. It was Spider-Man. Excuse me, sir. You say you saw Spider-Man right here in this lab? No, on the roof. What difference does it make? Who else would come in the window? Most cat burglars come in windows on upper floors. Which is how our trio did it, as Peter saw in his spider sense. Too bad he can't tell the captain. Page 10. They just say it's missing. What? Let me see. Baylor says, there is virtually no danger of the material being used to build an atomic device. Mm -hmm. Sounds like Baylor. Didn't he also say nobody could steal it? He should stop trying to be a prophet. He's really bad at it. In fact, the real danger is to the people who have the plutonium. The police think that Spider-Man has it. I know. Randy says there's only one thing to do, prove him wrong again. They're going to build an actual bomb. What about us? We're off to Gestad, Switzerland for a little fan service. You're welcome. She's employed by a certain Mr. White. Morris, believe me, the guns will leave for the subcontinent in the morning. Oh, and Boris, I understand that some armored cars are about to become available in South America. Of course I'm interested. It's my business. I know, Boris, planes. You want some planes. Boris, trust me, I'll make some calls in the morning. Goodbye, Boris. Mr. White is an arms dealer, a very rich arms dealer. He can afford to pay attractive women to pretend they like him. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Ah! He can also hire his own Keto, but he has more important things on his mind like the missing plutonium he just read about. He wants to go to New York and find it. It's almost harmless, doesn't it? It isn't. I don't want either one of you to ever forget that. He says, from now on, we monitor the radiation levels around the clock. Randy takes it in that crucible and puts it in a kiln. Peter is explaining why. When it cools, it would soften like putty and be practically pure. You mean it could be turned into a bomb? Oh, for sure. But it would be very dangerous just by itself. You see, it could go supercritical. Supercritical? Yeah, the mass would become so dense that then it would set off a chain reaction. You mean there could be an atomic explosion? Well, no, but just the release of radiation by itself would be dead. No explosion, but definitely a meltdown with an impossible amount of radiation bombarding everything within a radius of who knows. How do you know that Spider-Man didn't take the plutonium? Well, he just wouldn't do something like that. As a matter of fact, right now, he's probably trying to figure out who did do it. 
If he's not involved, why doesn't he go to the police and prove it? Well, Gail, it's not quite that simple. I mean, think about it. I think Spider-Man does a lot of good, but if people knew who he was, well, it just wouldn't be the same thing. Not to mention he'd be in danger all the time. So would his family. Nobody asked him to save the world. I don't really think he wanted any part of being a superhero. Then all he has to do is turn in his little blue tights. And what about his conscience? What is the point of having some kind of special power if you don't use it to help people? He forgets she works for a tabloid. There's only a 50-50 chance she has a conscience. Okay, it could be a tough life. And lonely. How can he ever talk to people? The way we're talking right now. I mean, what kind of a life can he really have? Think about it for a minute. He has to lie to everybody. At work, to his friends. What about girlfriends? How could he ever hope to get married? Although in the comics he eventually did. I liked Gwen Stacy a lot more than Mary Jane Watson, partly because when Peter was getting serious with Gwen, MJ was always there in the wings, waiting and hoping things would fall apart. One time they did, and she swooped in like a vulture to fill the romantic void in his life. Peter just walked away, and MJ's thought balloon gave me a wonderful expression. It said, well, pierce my ears and call me drafty. He really misses her. I think Gail is getting the picture about a lot of things. It's John Aston Smith. The news anchor? Yeah, he wants to interview me for the evening news. Well, yes, I guess I could speak for some of the students at the university. Well, if it would be convenient for you, perhaps you could come to my hotel, the Ramon, in, say, an hour? An hour? Fine, sure. Thank you. Surprise! It's not a big news anchor, man. When it's warning you twice, it's really saying, get out of here! What do you want? We want you, Parker. Never mind. What's this all about? I want the plutonium. You think I... Oh, no, you're wrong. We'll see. Angel. <laughs> Run, Gail! Get after them. Don't let them get away. By slipping out a window and going down a fire escape, they managed to get away. Peter could have gotten them out of there more dramatically, but he wore the wrong suit. They can't go to Peter's place. Everyone will be looking there. They head for her hotel instead. You're watching the radiation levels, aren't you? Of course. Yeah, she's watching it go off the scale, and she's still doing that stuff. I don't think that's what watching the levels is supposed to mean. Captain, what are you doing here? We've been looking for you, Parker. Well, come on in. This is Inspector DiCarlo from the Bureau. He attached himself to Barbera a little while ago, like it or not. So far, he's as helpful as a sore foot. Parker, you weren't in your apartment last night. No, I wasn't. I spent the night here. That's right. On the couch, Captain. Gail explains what happened to them because everybody thinks Peter has the plutonium. Barbera says, so do we. Let's go downtown. The problem is, Peter can't account for his whereabouts when it was stolen. We know why, but that's because Peter knows his secret is safe with us. He's got a lot of electronic equipment and a wall full of science books. 
but I couldn't find the plutonium anywhere. Well, maybe he doesn't have it. And why are we watching him? Because he's a very bright young man. If any of his fellow students have the plutonium, he'll find them for us. He may not be able to afford to. Parker, you're fired. Oh, come on, Chief. Don't call me that. Do I look like sitting bull to you? No, you look like Perry White. He doesn't like being called Chief either. There she is. She's beautiful. Hey, you don't look so good. Just tired. Well, I guess we're all exhausted. No, but it's worth it. The world wanted proof. Now they've got it. And if this were plastic explosive instead of modeling clay, we could make it go boom. I thought the idea was to get that stuff clear off the campus. Looks like Randy's getting a little power hungry. But he doesn't have time to think about it. Carla just collapsed. Weren't you guys monitoring the radiation levels? I thought we were. We had thought wrong. Feel all right? I'm fine. But I wasn't working directly with the plutonium like Carla was. We've got to get her to the hospital. What about the bomb? Forget the bomb. She's got radiation poisoning. She could die. It's not a real bomb anyway. As he said, they have modeling clay instead of plastic explosive. It works by having conventional explosive in that ball around the radioactive core. When the explosives go off, the pressure forces the plutonium to compress down to a fraction of its size. That puts the atoms close enough together to start the chain reaction that produces the massive devastation. Without the plastique, and if that shell is radiation proof, at the moment, it's harmless. The night the plutonium was taken, you were with him that night, were you? Yes. Well then, if he would come forward, he could clear you. In fact, you could clear each other. Peter, just leave me alone, please. Right now, he hates being Spider-Man. The worst part is he can't do anything about it. Say she's going to be all right. I wish I could. You know those are radiation burns, don't you? How did you get them? Um, we were working in the lab in the university. There's a lot of radioactive material. Right. I'll have to report this. Do whatever you have to do. Just make her well. There are several ways to treat radiation sickness. The first thing they'll have to do is get rid of her clothes and give her skin a thorough washing. Then they have to figure out what's been affected and that will determine the next treatment. It's not pleasant and whether it works or not is iffy, especially when someone has taken as big a dose as she has. Hello? Hello, Pete. Pete, it's Rita. Listen, we just sent a reporter over to the hospital. One of the girls from the university just showed up in emergency. She's got radiation sickness. Radiation sickness? Well, what's her name? Uh, Carla Wilson. Oh, no. Suddenly, it's all falling into place. He knows who took the plutonium, and he has a good idea where it is. Does he tell the police? No, he hops a cab and heads to the hospital, with Mr. White's man, Angel, following him. I just can't believe you actually did this. Somebody had to. Really? Well, you sure did a whiz-bang of an accomplishment, didn't you? Peter can't understand how the radiation got loose, unless... You built a bomb. To prove how easy it was, we weren't going to explode it. We're going to give it back. Some people tried to kidnap me because they thought I had the plutonium. Do you realize... Do you realize what they could do with an atomic bomb? Peter, relax. Nothing's going to happen. Yeah, we didn't get any plastic. Nothing can happen. They tell him where it is, and Peter's off to get it and turn it in. Hey, I'm looking all over for you. I've got good news. I called my editor and he'll pay you $500 to help me get the interview with Spider-Man. Or not. Oh, that's, that, that's just great, Gail. That's terrific. But right now I have a very important... Uh, my aunt is sick. I have to take her some medicine. May I come with you? No, what she has is very contagious. What is it? Well, nobody seems to know. It's just really, really bad. Are you afraid of getting it? I've already had a shot. For what? Excuse me. Maybe it's her background as a tabloid reporter, but she doesn't seem to understand when someone is trying to get rid of her or she does, Peter goes into the men's room and climbs out the window. Dr. Ferguson. Dr. Ferguson. 
Eventually, this guy will spend at least 20 more seconds on his hair. I hope the instant he gets out the door, he sneezes. Peter! Peter, where are you? Too bad she didn't look up, she would have found him. At Randy's building, White and company are going up the fire escape while Spider-Man is coming down the wall. Benson, get up on the roof. Keep your eye on that front street. All the way down the wall. Why is he doing that instead of going to Randy's apartment? Yeah, it's a California plate. That's not the most important thing right now. But just in case, he puts a tracker on the car. Not bad. The outer sphere is containing most of the radiation. We can handle it. Get it down to the car. Get up there, Angel. Spider-Man is back on the roof. He just can't seem to find the middle of this place. <laughs> Something I don't understand. Spider-Man is super strong, so why do these guys keep getting up after he hits them? Now the exterminator squashes this bug. And now he's in trouble. Last time he had to grab onto a griffin statue and nearly dislocate his arm. I didn't see any griffins nearby. Will Spider-Man become just another wad of gum on the sidewalk? Don't miss part two. Watching the levels is, yeah, I go, man. <laughs>